Biology works by generating diversity. If there is a problem for every solution, biology generates a diversity of solutions. And we are able to look at all of these solutions and pick the one that best fits our goals. The cell is this amazing machine that's incredibly efficient. It uses very little energy compared to anything we design. And it produces a ton of information which it stores and transfers nearly flawlessly every time. And as we gain a greater understanding of the cell and the genetics, it's almost becoming like very large scale integration on a chip. People began to realize that there was a, a power to the modularity of biological elements. They can be recomposed and put together in ways that suit our ability to engineer the organism and to produce new function. On a day-to-day -day basis, that means then now taking a microorganism, usually a bacteria, and trying to change how it normally does chemistry, mix and match pieces of enzymes, proteins together to get it to produce not more of itself, but to actually channel that energy and channel that carbon, that mass, into the products that we're interested in. The entire field has come a long way in the decade that Sinberg has been around, and Sinberg has catalyzed a lot of that development, getting the right people together, having conversations, funding the research behind that so we could show proof of principle. And then those researchers going out and using it. What we want to do is to enable scientists to continue the great science that uh, they've been doing and accelerate uh, their work. People do the design, build, test cycle. They design genes that they think will do something that they want. Then someone has to build those genes. And once they have the genes, they test which one of the different mutations does what they want. And that way they can learn something about the system and go back to the design. So they go through the design, build, test, learn cycle many times to get to their answer. We can engineer a life form to go into your body, look for a cancer, and then destroy it. This requires a really complex series of actions and decisions and checkpoints. And this is really what synthetic biology is great at, is programming organisms, programming life. It moves the boundaries to what questions you can ask and how broadly you can probe for solutions to it. The toolbox is an evolution and it's still built on basic tools of DNA splicing, but the places you can go in a given time frame can be, I think, revolutionary. It has commonly been a case in science that you focus only on the problem in front of you and not the context in which your problem is operating. And synthetic biology has been a very good poster child for shifting the way people look at problems to look at that broader context. If you're really talking about designing organisms to be able to do good things, producing materials, engaging in bioremediation, improving the efficiency of plants to fixate nitrogen, every one of these great inventions comes with the potential, and I want to underscore the word potential, the potential for safety, security, and environmental concerns. Over time, what has happened within Zimber is that very nice partnerships have developed with technologists doing the work, stepping forward and saying, we have an application that raises issues. Here are some things that we're doing to try to mitigate the risk. Can you work with us? When you don't do things proactively, you get hit with tons of regulation and pushback from the public. So it's, it is not an idealistic thing in my mind that we have to be very responsible about how we bring these products into the world. I can't stress enough the, the practices and policies thrust for Simberg, how important that is. It brings together, you know, not just practitioners from academia and industry, but other stakeholders as well, to have discussions around governance out on the table. Right now, synthetic biology, people don't really know what to think of it, or they don't think of it. That actually provides us with a great opportunity to help engage them with the shaping of the technology and help them to understand it. Programs like iGEM are terrific for that. All young people, it's from all over the world, so it's an international gathering, trying out a project and seeing what works and what doesn't. If you can start tying synthetic biology to societal needs, meaning ending hunger, ending poverty, they're going to be more attracted to be a part of the field. Why are we pretending that our brains alone are sufficient to tackle the enormous challenges that we can tackle with modern tools and technologies? Things that let us engage these problems at a higher level.
in the 50s, you wanted to be in space exploration. In the 60s and 70s, it was all about silicon, you know, being in, in electronics. In the 80s and the 90s, it was all about computers and, and internet. Now, we're in the era of uh, biology. Biology will be the next uh, growth engine of the economy. Acceptance. I would actually say we're at the point of acceptance, whereas I think 10 years ago, um, there was a lot of doubt as to whether or not this field would even have a community coalesce around it. What I see now is students being able to code and do molecular biology at the same time. For me, that's unheard of. Students who are able to combine both of those are really going to be able to do great things. We made it much easier to engineer biology. So I, I really think we'll look at this as a very formative period, a period where the field really started to mature. It's been a bit more than a hundred years now since uh, the automobile was invented. And I think everyone still kind of attaches that to one person, one specific event. I think when you look at synthetic biology, I think it's really a large community coming together, all of these fields really coming together, the people coming together and this community making it happen. I hope that that's what people are going to see in 100 years from now.